to none other than the wonderful Matt Canavan joining us, of course, in beautiful uh, Rocky, Yapoon to be absolute about it, of course, there in uh, Queensland, and the man who's the Deputy uh, Lord Mayor of Melbourne who's been enjoying just a very fruitful summer in the laneways of the great city, Nicholas Reese. Lads, hello. Happy 2024 <laughs> to both of you. I hope you're having a wonderful summer. So, let's start here. Nicholas, the great minds of the Labor Party, they were able to blame Philip Lowe and the Reserve Bank for all the issues to do with the elbow dozen of interest rate rises. Now, the plan is that cost of living is only about supermarkets. It's all about supermarkets. It's nothing else whatsoever. That seems to be the play. Is this going to work or are we just going to have a month of them being able to point at somebody and all of us just have to end up paying more? Well, it is the case that the inflation figures out last week were pretty good, lowest number we've had in a long time. So that does indicate, uh, if the number is accurate, that across the broader economy, prices are uh, not growing at the rate they have been. Um, but certainly when it comes to supermarket prices, we do seem to have collectively, as a nation, reached a tipping point, you know, where things kind of keep going, keep going, keep going, and then suddenly everybody almost simultaneously looks at the bill and goes, what the hell is going on there? So um, they've got Craig Emerson, um, who uh, I'm sure everyone on this panel agree is mm. a very um, a good mind and a, mm. a trusted pair of hands, yes. and he's a straight shooter as well, so he's going to mm. do a review of what's yes. going to the supermarkets. We've got the ACCC looking at things. There's a Senate inquiry as well having a look. Uh, Albanese, he's talking tough, says that he might oh. change the supermarket code That'll from being voluntary to mandatory, and he'll take <clears throat> whatever action he needs to. So, look, I think they're saying the right things and they're doing the right things, but, of course, the proof will be okay. what happens over the next couple of months. Yeah, Matt, uh, look, we well, all know well, from Rudd and Grocery Watch to the amount of money and dairy farmers, all the rest of it here, this is well-trodden ground. To me, bashing the supermarkets is like bashing banks. It feels good, but nothing ever seems to change. But what do you think? Well, I'm, I'm glad to start off with a uh, start of 2024 with a debate. I disagree completely with uh, 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 with Nicholas there. Uh, I mean, Craig Emerson's not the man for this role. I'm glad you mentioned Grocery Watch, uh, Paul, because the minister responsible for presiding over grocery, the Grocery Watch failure, was none other than Dr. Craig oh, Emerson. Fair he was really? competition minister at the time. They <laughs> shut down the Grocery Watch website. Uh, in fairness to Craig, the guy who tried started the process was a little man called Chris Bowen. Chris Bowen started Grocery Watch and Craig Emerson had to come in and, and, and get rid of it. Um, nothing much changes, oh, does it? Such um, <laughs> it's just too, safe too funny. Look, I'm, I'm, I'm going to have even, even to more say serious, 15 love. Well done. Craig Emerson... <laughs> yeah. Well played. <laughs> while he was competition minister, while he was competition minister, Craig Emerson wrote a scathing piece in The Australian uh, calling out people who wanted to put in tougher competition laws on Coles and Woolworths, in particular <laughs> ideas from the Nationals Party that wanted to uh, look at divestiture powers, which exist in all other developed countries, uh, specifically to target Coles and Woolies. Craig Emerson called these policies zany. And so if the Prime Minister was serious here about taking Coles and Woolworths to task, he wouldn't appoint someone to do a review into them who had previously uh, called policies uh, to attack the competition issues in this sector, in the supermarket sector, as zany. This is clearly a setup. I know Craig Emerson well. I mean, I'll agree with Nick. He's, got a, he's a smart guy. There's no doubt about that. But he is going to be on the side of big business here. That's everything he's done in his career indicates that. He will not be on the side of small businesses here. That's not been his record. Uh, and this is looks like it's going well, to be a complete but, damp squib. If we're serious here, if we're really serious, let's get those divestiture powers in. That's the only way uh, to pull in the big uh, supermarket chains like Coles and Woolworths. Okay, so what does a divestiture like power this, mean? Well, we'll split so you up just like other countries brain. do. What, what does that mean? In practical terms, what does that mean? Well, in, in other countries, in the UK and the US, if, if companies uh, show repeated anti-competitive conduct, right. uh, the government can order that those companies be split into smaller parts. This has happened uh -huh. in the US before with their telecommunications interest industry. Microsoft in fact, Ronald style. Reagan uh, yeah. did that. Uh, in the non-airs, Microsoft was threatened with that and they did have to make some changes in their internet browser and what have you because of these laws. These laws are a big stick. They're not often used. Uh, but uh, usually in these circumstances, it's good to carry a big stick and not have to, and only have to use it sparingly. Nick, feel free to answer the question that uh, you prefer me ask, but I'll ask this one anyway, which is um, obviously 
smarty pants in the government uh, are trying to work out, okay, we know there's got a bit of aggro in this area, so we've got to find somewhere to channel this staff, make it look like there's a level of accountability. Certainly, you know, this is what happened when it came to the Reserve Bank and and, and, uh, and uh, the changes there with Philip Lowe, despite the fact that the incoming one seemed to say a lot of the same things that Philip Lowe had said. Then we changed the whole way the Reserve Bank uh, works when it comes to interest rates. Uh, we know that, you know, hauling... hauling um, uh, Joyce before senators was good because it meant that there was this focal point of rage and people could mm. US style yell at, uh, at at Alan Joyce before he was running out the door uh, anyway. Is that the idea here? Because unless you're talking about the ultimate sanction of the government is to use the power of the laws that it has to say, you know what, enough. We've had 500 inquiries, 300 people telling us what's wrong every single year about these things. Unless we're threatening to break you up, then... This is all noise for politics, isn't it? Well, I do think that Anthony Albanese is talking pretty tough on this. I mean, look, we all know supermarket profits talking. have gone up. That, that's provable. <laughs> do something. We know farm gate prices are down and we know that prices on the shelves are up. We're all feeling that. It's and all so, talk. so these are all provable it's all talk. points. You just and, said and it was I do, all I do talk. think, you know, it's often the case... We, you would have all seen the play before where the, the Prime Minister takes a more conciliatory tone and wheels out ministers to, to go tougher. But I, I think Albanese, he, he's been pretty tough on this. Now, I, I'll be the first to say the proof is in the pudding and, and the eating of the pudding that's, that's coming. So let's see what comes out of this Emerson review. Uh, he's already flagging... Does anybody... ..look at making the, um, the, the supermarket grocery code uh, mandatory, which is more than, uh, you know... Uh, Matt Canavan and his crew did in the uh, 11 or we so years. We still haven't though, implemented uh, the banking government. I haven't World heard anyone Commission in the government talk about divestiture, but that's a big call, Matt, tonight. Are you saying that you think the supermarket should yeah, be broken I've, up? I've into, supported it. I've, I've written Senate, like we've seen I've written Senate inquiries on it. It's National's Party policy. I Look, I admit, I mean, the problem we've got here is there's, there's a cabal between elements of the Liberal Party and the Labor Party to protect big business. And so we've got to smash that. There's an opportunity to smash that here uh, right now because I agree, there's not enough competition in the supermarket sector. This is an opportunity to align ourselves to the rest of the world and have these proper competition laws in place. And so we have proper competition in our supermarkets for our farmers, for retail consumers. Uh, so this is something that should come in. We should do this. We can do this right now. Uh, it's, it, otherwise, it's all talk. You can tell the way the Prime Minister's talking. I know exactly what's happening. He says these comments in the a, in a, in a media statement. Then behind the scenes, his office and the corporate affairs people talk to each other and say, hey, look, mate. Woolworths and Coles, we still love you. We yeah. don't really care. We, we just got to say these things in public, all right, just to, just, to, just to take some skin off you. That's exactly what's going on here. It's mm. all a big setup. Yeah, also, I mean, if, they, if they're serious about short-term things that will uh, have effects in the next six months, the next 12 months, the next 24 months, this government could turn around and uh, delay or cancel its heavy vehicle taxes, which, uh, of course, are going to be uh, adding to the cost of transportation of all of the things that end up in supermarkets. But, you know, silly little me, remembering the policies the government actually puts forward, not the... Uh, inquiries that apparently will fix what they could fix of their own policies. Now, I want to ask you uh, about this, Matt, which is it's been a bad summer for major renewable projects, and I say bad summer from them because everyone from Tanya Plibersek through to uh, several courts, even some uh, other institutions, are starting to turn around and say, no, it's not a right fit. Uh, the offshore wind stuff in Victoria, the Victorian government and uh, the federal government at loggerheads, that that may well not happen. And then there's the scenario about that major uh, solar farm, which was going to go outside of Mudgee. We talked about this for a very long period of time. And again, this looks like it's going to be knocked back. Yeah, well, exactly right, Paul. Fortunately, we haven't had the, the raging bushfires that were uh, predicted by the Bureau of Meteorology when they said we'd have a dry, hot El Nino summer. Haven't had those, but there is a raging fire building uh, in rural and regional areas against these large-scale industrial renewable energy projects. It's happening all around the country uh, where foreign, largely foreign investors think they can just march into country towns and blanket landscapes with wind factories and solar factories, completely change the ambience of uh, communities, take away agricultural land and the productive base of those communities. And then once those, once these industrial facilities are built, uh, there's nothing, nothing left. There's no jobs left really in a, in a built wind uh, factory or solar factory. Uh, it's just a sugar hit while construction's going on for the town. So there's been a big reaction against this. There'll be a rally in Parliament House or out, out the front of Parliament House 
uh, on February the 6th, the first day back. Thousands are coming to Canberra because enough is enough. Uh, the local communities should have a say here. If mining companies, if uh, manufacturing firms have to have a so-called social licence, why don't foreign-based investors in the renewable energy space similarly need to get community support before they proceed with these large-scale projects. Here, here. Uh, look, uh, send the details about how we can get it out on the socials. We'll mention it on the show. We want as many people to be there as possible, if you can make it, uh, the first day of Parliament back in the first week of February. Nicholas, this is the central problem, right? We're not now, we're not, we're now not having a conversation about uh, renewables the future, all right? We're not having a conversation about does climate change exist. We're having the basic conversation that you and I have had for the best part of 10 years, which is the cost of transition, and now part of that is the cost to communities of transition. Now, you may well be able to find individual landholders that are willing to sell off a pocket of their farm to put up some solar or some wind, but then you start to see the very areas that don't want this stuff to start to turn around and push back, including environmental groups about things like offshore wind. Bowen knows this is a problem because he came out in the past couple of days and Casanova said, get on with it sooner rather than later, cut the red tape, approve these things. Well, at some point in time, there is going to be a backlash here, and I think it's going to come in lots of different ways. Yeah, I mean, look, you know I love renewables. I love solar. I, I love just. wind. Uh, and so I want to see those projects going Have them in Melbourne. But, well, I'm sorry, I want to see more, I want to see <laughs> more solar them. and I want to see more wind. But that what doesn't Melbourne? mean... Put a solar farm in the Botanic Gardens absolutely. then, Deputy Mayor. Yeah, I mean... I'm on, I'm on, yeah, I don't mind. Go come on, life. Matt. I mean, you, you, you sort of started the show tonight telling us how you're well, about standing not? up against what, big interests. Well, wind you seem to be the national the spokesperson for big what, coal, as far as I can tell. Why don't you put some solar for just take away some buildings? You're all for... You're all for more. You're all for more competition, except if it's more competition for coal uh, in the form of renewables. Wind farms so, yeah, in Federation just, Square. Well, why don't you just do it in Melbourne? I've got no I mean, problem with doing it in Melbourne. You're the deputy mayor. I, Go for your life. I, I, I support renewables, but that doesn't mean that wind farms and solar uh, farms not in make my sense everywhere. And I think that look, fo following that debate in Mudgee, it looks to me like the the local mayor's got made a really good point about not putting a huge solar farm right at the entrance to the city. Um, now, it, as for the case of this um, Barney that's going on between Victorian Labor government Very and the Federal Labor government over this um, Western Port um, terminal, uh, it's hard to know uh, you know who's right and wrong there. But I do hope they can sort it out because it's about building a facility where they can receive and then turn around and construct the um, turbines for the big offshore wind farm developments they want to build off the coast of Victoria. And that's what's happened in Europe. Like, you go up through the North Sea and up We're through Scandinavia, there, but here, these huge offshore wind farms uh, that have been built and they're, they're helping powering the continent. And that's what we want to see here in Australia. It would be absolutely terrific. They've just got to work out uh, the right location for where to build the facility that will help deliver it.